course. If this is your first time joining our Career Crash course, we do this every week where uh, somebody covers a, a best-selling book or a book of value that talks about career, about business, about leadership, about improving yourself. And for those who don't have time to leaf through book after book, we actually get the best and juiciest parts of the book and share it in something like this. So we love to talk about big ideas, but in short talks like tonight. And for, so far for all of April, we've been talking about books that have to do with adversity, understanding and overcoming adversity. And we've had a number of wonderful books and tonight is no different. We're going to talk about an international bestseller. Uh, you can, in fact, Google uh, the book, The Happiness Advantage, it, read about it, watch some videos. But tonight, we're going to invite somebody to share what they think are some of the most important insights from The Happiness Advantage. But before we get to that, uh, maybe we can greet each other a pleasant evening, Thursday evening. The work week has gone by so fast maybe because every day seems like the other day. But even then, I want to welcome everyone and please greet each other in the chat box. And go ahead and tell us where you're from, uh, what you do. We'd love to, you don't have to put your entire work description, but in general, what do you do, where you're from? And let's also welcome our first timers tonight. So I'll give you, I'll give you a bit of time to type in whatever you'd like to say. We've got some people who are watching from Davao, from Cebu, I believe, Quezon City, where I'm from, uh, Los Banos. We've got two doctors so far, a student. Uh, I'm sure there are a bunch of professionals out there. Tonight's event is also organized by Syzygy. Uh, my name is Ryan Fernandez. I'm actually the co-founder of Syzygy. And Syzygy is a term when planets and stars, you know, heavenly bodies align. And in our belief, Syzygy is, is actually where the right people and the right opportunities also get connected. We're a business and leadership consulting company. We develop develop and empower people in entrepreneurship and also in, in help them develop themselves in leadership and in other aspects of personal growth. And because we can't do live events, we've decided to do something like this for free. So if you're here for the first time, you're so welcome to share it with other people. We've got uh, some folks from Cavite, Las Viñas, Marikina, uh, again from Cebu, a bunch of people from Cebu. Uh, North Cotabato, uh, somebody from the Academe, Alabang, uh, Manila airline employee, hope you're doing safe. Uh, we've got a teacher who's now, uh, oh, a teacher in China, but originally from Cebu. I hope I got that right. Uh, stay safe, everyone, we're, we're, whether you're watching from Philippines or abroad, uh, Cebu, OFW and Quezon optometrist. Okay, I know I, we've got a regular attendee here who's watching from Milan as well. We've got uh, Pinoy from Milan, Italy watching this. Davao, casino employee. So we have a very, very colorful group of people tonight from many different backgrounds. And that is really, really great because uh, this is supposed to be a discussion, not a lecture. If you want to comment throughout the talk, you can actually type in the chat box and have a friendly discussion with other attendees. I won't be unmuting anyone uh, just for the sake of controlling the audio. 
but you can use the chat box to your heart's content. So with that, uh, okay, we're just about ready. I'm so excited to call on our share for tonight. She is actually the other co-founder of Syzygy. Uh, Olive Fernandez Bernabe was in television and the hotel industry for a number of years before going into fast food. She was in, uh, ran a chain of ice cream, hot dog, and Mr. Donut stalls, uh, shops in many of the malls of Metro Manila. But a number of years ago, she decided to uh, share and teach other people how to succeed in the realm of business. And that's where she found her passion in, in speaking and in, in coaching and helping others succeed. So tonight, uh, she's going to be sharing a book that I think all of us will find really valuable during these challenging times. It's so easy for us to be affected, to react to, to negative things happening, to just be dragged down by, by all the, the worries and the negative stuff happening. But one of the key messages that I want to share with you uh, in all of our webinars is we may not be able to control what happens around us, but you always can control how you react. And tonight, we're going to talk about a very sought after, very elusive uh, idea, feeling, concept, phenomenon, whatever you want to call it. And simply, it's, it's being happy. And it's not about what's in your wallet. It's not about uh, how many likes you get on Facebook. We're going to talk about a deeper sense of happiness and fulfillment and joy and how it actually connects with your, with your professional life and your career. So without further ado, I'm just going to uh, close my camera and switch to our speaker. So just give me a couple of moments to do that. I'm going to call on our share for tonight, Olivia Fernandez Bernabe. Hello and good evening to everyone, all of you who are attending the webinar tonight. I'm Olivia, Olive for short, and I have a passion for uh, reading books. I'm not really a voracious reader. I try to read, but I like to read and listen to audiobooks and share very exciting ideas that I learn from books. It's a passion. And it's also part of my business community where we promote learning and personal growth through books. And tonight I'm going to share about a book that was given to me for Christmas, last Christmas. I thought it would be very appropriate to discuss the book today because happiness can be very powerful as you will soon learn. And it is a tool that we can employ, especially now at our very difficult situation. We're in the middle of a lockdown, a global pandemic, something we've never experienced in our entire lives. This is the first time it's happened to all of us. And this could be a tool to kind of immunize us from everything that's going on out there. Now, I'm going to share with you, I, I read his book uh, in December. I'm not just uh, getting a summary online or I actually digested a book. There's so much material in the book, but I have 10 points that really uh, connected with me. And that's what I want to uh, talk about. The book is by an author. His name is Sean Acker. And I really don't know a lot about his background, but he actually, uh, I think, studied or worked in Harvard. Uh, he was a student or a professor in Harvard for so many years. So he also wrote many other books, but this one made a difference to me. So just look at the slide because we have very interesting slides. And... Uh,
Okay, there we go. So as we begin, let's define what is happiness. It's a very simple question, but I know we're going to hand, have endless answers, especially if I ask each and every one of you, like there's 67 people in this webinar right now, and each of you will have a different answer. Like I want a beautiful home that's gonna make me happy. I want to be able to travel the world. I want to be debt free. I want to have a lifetime partner. I would like love to have children, you know, on and on and on. It's so, even Google does not have a definitive answer because happiness is different for each and every one of us. It's very subjective, as you will see. As I said, the author, the author is, a, was a student and actually also worked in uh, Harvard University, the prestigious university. And key number one, my takeaway from the book is traditional psychology focuses on the negatives without seeing the positives. I think you will agree. I mean, we live in a very negative world. Look around us what's going on right now. Look at the news, whether it's online, TV, or print. Well, we don't have any print newspaper anymore. It's all negative. In movies, the themes that thrive have violence. They have murder. They have all kinds of sin and negative things. And those are the things that really make it. The positives are always boring. I think you will agree. And um, slide number three is, I'm just going to talk to you about a study which uh, the, the author talked about. And he said that he was in a town or a place called Soweto in South Africa, which is not too far away from Johannesburg in South Africa. And he noticed something very, very different among the students going to school there compared to other students in Harvard, okay? What did he notice? The students in Soweto were very positive. They were very eager to learn. They were passionate about their work. And when asked, why are you so happy? Why are you, you so positive about going to school? And they said, because for us, it is a privilege that was not available for our parents. So that's a very positive kind of mindset. Whereas four out of five students in Harvard actually are depressed. That's what the book said. There's, they're in the most elite school in the world, in the planet, and they are suffering from stress, they, they have a lot of work to do. Their feeling is negative. Maybe there's competition, negative feeling around because, uh, you know, I, I, I know that some of these Ivy League schools even have students committing suicide because of the stress. So imagine you have students in a faraway place in South Africa and you have students in Harvard and the Harvard students are so negative and so depressed. Let me read you something. We need to change the way we think. We need to change the things we do. And there's a, something in the book. The book is right here, The Happiness Advantage. There's something in the book that uh, talks about you, like a behavioral riddle. You are, imagine that you're in a cage behind bars. The bars are made of titanium and your cage is empty. To survive, you must consume 240 tiny pellets of food every hour or you die. The pellets are provided to you, but unfortunately, the pellets are located in, a very, small, uh, in very small holes outside of your cage. So the process of reaching through the bars and actually grabbing a pellet initially takes you 30 seconds per pellet. If you can't learn to complete the task faster, 
you will consume only half of the amount of nutrition you need and will eventually starve. What do you do? If you don't change, adapt, improve your skill or whatever solution, you are going to starve. The answer is expand the part of your brain in charge of this task so you can become faster at retrieving these pellets. Impossible? Sounds impossible. Well, not so fast. This riddle is in fact based upon a famous study from the field of neuroscience, only that the subjects in the experiment were not humans, but squirrel monkeys. After 500 tries, the monkeys had become very adept at retrieving the pellets, even as the size of the hole continually decreased. So even though the task became harder, through practice, they began to master it. Anybody can master change. Anybody can grow and develop themselves to be a better person. Anybody can make a goal to have a different kind of mindset and remove stress and tension from your life. Anybody who makes a decision and anybody who thinks that it is important enough. Now, going back to school, students who succeed have a different realization of reality. As I said, you might see it as a privilege or you might see it as a source of terrible tension. I remember the story of three people who were uh, cementing bricks, okay? They were putting bricks, like creating a wall. And uh, the first one was asked, what are you doing? Can't you see I'm laying bricks? The second person was asked, what are you doing? Well, as you see, this is my job. I'm building a wall. And the third person was asked, so what are you doing? I'm helping build a cathedral so that when this is done, many, many thousands of people will come and give glory to God. So what you do can be a passion or it can be a, a calling or it can just be a career or it could just be a job. People who have a calling, they succeed big time. Key number two, success revolves around happiness and not the other way around. You know, we have a feeling and this thinking, when we are successful, we will become happy, right? Because success causes happiness. Okay. Not true. Not true. How many celebrities, superstars, rich people, famous people have everything you could imagine in life that could make them happy? And the next thing you know, they overdose with drugs and they kill themselves. They, they suicide. They commit suicide. You can name those names. Rather than success, success you have to be happy first and then you succeed. It's not like you succeed and then you're happy. So there's a big difference now. Now let's look again at the definition of happiness. Happiness is defined as the experience of positive emotions. But again, the truth, it depends highly on different people, different ages, different backgrounds, different personality types. Okay. Modern psychology. Feel good, positive mindset, equal smarter, more motivated, and uh, enjoy more success. I, I'd like to talk quickly about a book called Mindset. Okay, I, I, yeah, Mindset is a book that I read a few months ago. And then this book talked about the difference between having a closed mindset and an open mindset. The closed mindset are people who are negative, they're pessimistic, they don't open up, the, so opportunity doesn't come their way. Whereas people who have a growth mindset have an open mind. They love to learn. They, they're very open to change. And they believe in what we call is, they call it now this neuroplasticity, the ability for the mind to develop new tiny neurons in their brain so that they can continue to learn and become smarter and, and become better regardless of age regardless of age, because we think that as people get older, 
their learning capability goes down. No, all the science now shows that you can begin to create those new neurons in your brain, no matter what age you are, as long as you are motivated and you have a positive mindset. Okay, now. This is a brain, okay? And what you see are the different hormones in your brain that actually contribute to happiness. Now, let me read you something that I got in the book. Monks who spend years meditating, meditating, grow their left prefrontal cortex, their prefrontal tongue twister, prefrontal cortex becomes bigger because of their meditation. And guess what this is? This is the part of the brain responsible for happiness. So the more you meditate, I would say the more you pray, the more you talk to your creator, the more you become happy because your, that part of your brain becomes bigger. Now let's look at the hormones. Okay, let's look at dopamine. Dopamine over there is actually good for bl blood pumping. It regulates the pleasure and reward system in your brain. Then you have serotonin, which is, it helps to regulate your mood. These are the, these are the positive happiness hormones. And then you have endorphins. Endorphins are happy hormones that usually come out when you exercise which is why I exercise first thing in the morning. I mean, we're in a lockdown, but I can always exercise, you know, turn on the, the laptop and look for a workout I like, whether it's, whether it's Zumba, whether it's uh, African dancing, whether it's legs or core or arms and, you know, and I force myself to work out at least 45 minutes every morning. And I really feel a high after workout first thing in the morning because of my endorphins. And these all help create the feeling of happiness. And there you have the oxytocin, a hormone which is connected with love. The oxytocin is a love hormone and usually produce when cuddling, when people cuddle, you know, I'm not just talking about spouses. I'm even talking about the, uh, the babies and their mothers. So let me tell you something about cuddling. There was a, uh, something I read, maybe not in this book, but there was an experiment with monkeys, actually. There were baby monkeys and the experiment introduced two artificial monkey mothers, both made out of wire. And one monkey was made out of wire, but had milk. And the other monkey was made out of wire too, but was covered with um, a warm and fuzzy, nice to touch kind of a cloth. And they let the baby monkeys free to go to whichever mother they wanted to. And they could actually go to the mother with a, with a cloth that's warm and fuzzy, or they could go to the mother with the milk. And you would think, of course, they're going to the milk because that's their survival. The surprising thing about this experiment is that majority, if not all the monkeys, baby monkeys, went to the mother who had a feeling of warmth and cuddle. Trust me, monkeys and human beings, this oxytocin is very important if you want to have that feeling of happiness. When you're in a good mood, you will score better in your math test. When you're positive, you're going, to be, you're going to have good results. I was just reading in this book an experiment they did with doctors, okay? They got two sets of doctors. They, they were supposed to do a procedure. Well, I, I forgot the, what the procedure was, but let's say a simple surgery, okay? And half of the doctors were asked, to do the procedure, but the other half, they were given something to make them happy before the procedure. So you guess what it was? They were given yummy chocolates before going into the procedure, medical procedure. And guess what? 
the doctors who were given the, the young uh, chocolates before the procedure, they performed better and finished the procedure faster than the group that were not given something to make them happy. So this shows that even a small increase in your mood or even a small uh, element that adds to your happiness can make a big, big deal, can make a big difference. Imagine just some chocolates making that difference. The Happiness Research Institute from over 200 scientific studies on 275,000 people, okay? Uh, okay, let me just read some comments. Yes, oh, here we go. Uh, from uh, Vatet, yes, like Karen Carpenter, very rich, but died of drugs, yes. Uh, Marilyn Monroe, you know, we're just going back a little bit. I'm reading the comments. And um, Michael Jackson, Yes, Mindset is an awesome book. Okay, people perform best when they feel good about themselves. I agree, Alex, all the way. Going back to this research, Happiness Research Institute. Happiness leads to success in every domain of our lives, relationships, careers, health, creativity. This is like 200 scientific studies. So there's no question about it. Okay, now, key number three, the happiness advantage will give you a performance edge, just like what I talked about, the doctors. And you can apply that to any kind of situation, whether you're going to have an exam, whether you're going to uh, be delivering a, a speech or whatever it is. When you have a positive mindset, a happy mindset, a confident mindset, you'll do much better. So how do we stay happy? That's the question. All right. Now, uh, gratitude. Having that, I'm just checking some of the, I know. Ah, okay. Ah, oh, correction. Karen Carpenter died of anorexia, not drugs. Okay, so, uh, but that we stand corrected there. Thank you, uh, Durf. So gratitude, small crumbs of positive around you. Okay, even tiny, tiny, tiny. Uh, conversation with friends, watching funny videos, and, and uh, telling ourselves, what am I grateful for today? Okay. So that is important as well. All right. Now, what else? Well, as I talked about earlier, meditation and prayer. Silence is the language of God. Like the monks, the part of your brain that develops happiness, that grows through meditation and prayer. Anticipation. What are you looking forward to? Your next vacation. You know, you can increase your endorphins by up to 27% by anticipating. Well, we are in a lockdown right now and we're very limited. Our movement's limited. The things we used to enjoy is limited. Our food is limited in a way. We don't have the variety of food we want and some people don't have enough food that they want. Our resources are also limited uh, generally. But if we are to be different, if we are to employ the power of happiness, we imagine what we're looking forward to. We would rather think about what is happening now that is good for me and I can look forward to. For example, this situation for me has made me more, um, what, a more keen, about digital transformation. I'm not a techie person, but with the help of my son, I'm beginning to learn new things. I'm beginning to how to set up and operate a web conference. I'm, I'm learning technology. And that is something to look forward to because the whole world is going to have a new normal and that's gonna be part 
part of it, technology. So I'm eager because I'm able to learn. You know, when you learn something new, you produce dopamine. So you're excited to learn more. So it's a positive thing to be learning. What else can I look forward to? Well, you know, another realization is, well, we have vacation set, but we don't know when that vacation is going to happen. Okay, we have trips scheduled, but the next trip got canceled. The other trips, I don't know they're gonna, it's going to happen. But um, I, I, can, I can look forward to something. For example, I realized that I can work out at home. I don't need to go to the gym. I can work out better at home without having to pay for the fees and go through traffic and parking and, and everything. So there are many positive realizations today that I would not have learned if, you know, if for this, if not for this situation. And I can go on and on and on. And I anticipate uh, the positive things that will that will happen. I anticipate getting back on track in our business and um, being stronger, being more resilient, being more positive, because uh, that was the choice we made to be positive during this time. Okay. Another way to be happy is to commit conscious acts of kindness. Just want to read some comments. Okay. I have four comments here. Thank you for the comments. And, uh, all right. Oh, okay. Belinda, okay, kind of agrees. She says that Karen Carpenter, oh, we're stuck with Karen Carpenter, died because she was very unhappy. Oh, uh, yes, anorexia. Behind, the, behind, she lost a lot of weight. She was on weight management drugs due to loneliness. Okay. Correction again that springs out of from controlling parents for a documentary, Goodbye to Love Life of Karen Carpenter. So it's true. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Okay. And Cherie says, practicing gratitude daily, do daily does wonders to your life. Now, aside from that, are acts of kindness. Wow. A lot of people need kindness today. Well, just today, a little girl, I, I went out, okay, I had to go to the bank, and uh, I, 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 a little girl came to the car, and the usual line, please, mom, mom, please share your blessings. Yeah, ganyan ang, that, that's the way they, they approach you now. They, there's an element of making you feel guilty, but, you know. I, I gave her some money. I didn't give her coins. I gave her a paper bill. Okay, I, I won't tell you what it is, but it's a paper bill. And I just told her, don't, wag mo sabihin sa iba, because dudumugin ako dito, okay? So, hey, that's my a random act of kindness today. I drove by, uh, I didn't drive. My driver, <laughs> I'm not driving. Uh, we passed by Jollibee. I was surprised to see it was open because all the, hardly any, any fast food is open. So I said, okay, okay, I'd like maybe to try the palabok. I'm craving for palabok. And uh, I, I, uh, there's no palabok. There's only spaghetti. And I said, okay, four spaghettis, two for my house help and two for us. Act random act of kindness. On and on and on. Infuse positivity in your environment. Good morning. How are you? How are you feeling? You know, just be positive. If it's negative, zip your mouth, you know, because we can all be negative. We can all have the bad moods. But if it's positive, you know, share it, uh, speak about it, encourage people, on and on and on. Now, spend money, but not on stuff. This is what studies show. When you spend money, your, your uh, happiness will last for a while. Not a while, a short while, maybe a day. Let's say you buy a nice dress, okay? Once you're excited about the dress, you're happy you have a new dress. But after you wear the dress, it's not new anymore, and your happiness fades. Rather than buying things, the book says spend money but on experiences with other people that are meanif meaningful and lasting. If you can travel, travel, okay? One year ago, 
we visited the Holy Land and Turkey for the very first time. I, I saw the Holy Land. That's, that's an ultimate dream. I, I walked where Jesus walked. Did it cost money? Yes. But was it worth it? It was unforgettable to see the uh, Galilee, to see the Sea of Galilee, to see where, in Jerusalem where Jesus walked. And that's the beauty about travel because uh, like, like this Holy Week was so alive for me because the places where Jesus went, Gethsemane and Jerusalem and where he was crucified that, and where he was born, <clears throat> we saw all of that. Was it worth it? I'll remember it forever. Now, I'm not saying you need to spend tons of money for travel, but you can travel to nearby places, even local places, but you can be with your loved ones and make lasting memories, right? So that's how you spend money. Exercise, here we go again. I talked about exercise and exercise again. This is something that can really make you happy. Okay. I think I have a, a little bit a picture about the exercise. Okay. It's already enhanced your performance. Mm, I lost the picture about exercise. Let me just try to find. No, uh, it's not. I saw it earlier. There was a slide here that we, uh, that we put for the exercise. No. Anyway, it's, it will pop up if it's there. So key four is enhance your performance by enhancing your mindset. Here we go again. Mindset, the way you think, okay? It's a perspective. You can see this book this way, or you can see the book this way. It's your mindset. It's perspective. So there was a experiment, actually in the book, they talked about it done, in 1979, a group of 75-year-old men were isolated and stayed for, for a week, a whole week in an environment that aimed to recreate the feel, feeling of living in 1959 when they were in their 20s or younger. So what was this? They totally locked them, locked down then, 75-year-old men and recreated 1959 the way people dressed up, the cars they were using, the music that was playing, the food they were eating. And you know what? After uh, a week, the older men actually felt that they became much, much younger. They actually showed signs. Their brain became sharper. Their actions became, they became more agile with their movements they really became like younger individuals by changing the environment, by changing their mindset. That's how powerful mind, mindset should be. Now, some comments here, very true, uh, about giving food relief packages for scavengers. These are acts of random kindness and uh, prayer, definitely. Oh, okay, the slide on exercise is somewhere there. Okay, okay, let me just go back to the slide of exercise. I clicked it too soon. I just didn't see it. I didn't see the slide. Anyway, sorry about that. This is a live webinar. There's no editing. So uh, I need to go back to this experiment then. I couldn't see the exercise slide. And uh, Yun, the feeling of living when they were like 20 years old, amazing. The same with happiness. The more you believe in your ability to succeed, the more likely you will. Idea number five, train your brain to look at the positive over the negative. We've been talking about that over and over and over effect, uh, again, about the difference, the difference. When your mind is positive, you're looking, your mind is open. And when you're, when you're, uh, 
mind is negative, your mind is closed. They talked about the Tetris experiment. This was a Harvard study. This is in the book of 27 people. I don't play video games, but in the vi video game Tetris, I believe, is that you actually have to put some shapes or objects. You, you put them in a certain, I don't play it. You put them in a certain slot, okay? So your goal is to fit objects in slots. And what they did is that they experimented with 27 people. For several days, they played Tetris for three hours straight. And what happened is that when they got out of the experiment, their mind was already preconditioned. Like everything they saw, like if a car, they had to imagine it putting it in a slot or a building had to be put. It was like the, the, vis the game, the visual of the game was playing over and over and over in their mind. Now, what is the relevance to happiness? That means that you can be open to opportunity. You can be open to happiness. If you choose happiness, that's going to be your default, okay? Because your mind is so trained to defaulting into happiness, not sadness, into positive, not uh, negative, to gratitude, not the opposite, to opti optimism, not pessimism. So your mind is automatically set. That's what they said was the, per the, the findings of the experiment, that human beings can be trained by working the same pathways in your mind over and over and over again. I remember an audio I listened to, uh, which talks about your mind. You know, if you have a negative neural pathway, it's like having a, 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 a road that is big because you're always negative. So the road is lit, the, the, the road is cemented. It's really a, a speed of, of a very, very good road. It's a fast track road, okay? And if you want to be, to change that and you want to have a negative mindset, a positive mindset, you have to deliberately create a new road. And you have to make that new road really strong, cemented, bright, uh, freeway, um, so many lanes, really fast. And by, by always going through that road, you're creating a new way of thinking, a new pathway until the old negative pathway becomes broken, dirty, shabby, you know, and you don't go there anymore. So you can do that with your mind. That's what the te te Tetris effect is. Think about another thing you can do is three good things a day habit. Write it down every day. What am I grateful for today? What are the three things every day? Maybe when you say your prayer at night, Lord, I'm grateful for number one. I enjoyed my favorite so-and-so. I was able to eat, uh, you know, like for today, I'm grateful. I was able to find my favorite mango tort. I like mango tort. I usually just buy it for parties, but I'm, I was craving for it. And I, I saw the store. Uh, it's not a store. It's a home. And we rang the bell and lo and behold, they had mango tort. So I'm, Lord, I'm grateful for that. So think of the three, three things that you're grateful for every day, okay? And uh, we have some comments here. Alexis, it's, I, I read about nostalgia in a book before it somewhat gives us the mind, the feeling of how much like ourselves returning to its comfort zone. That's why if you work abroad, listening to Tagalog old songs helps you better to have a feeling of being less homesick. Okay. Uh, yes, neuroplasticity, et cetera, et cetera. It's addictive. Okay, positive is addictive. So I'm just sharing some of the comments and I don't want this to be too long, but anyway, we've got other points. So three things that happened today, 
Okay, even small things, remember, small things can make a big difference. Remember the doctors who were just given chocolate? Key number six, fall up by turning negative into positive. There was an experiment done. Okay, it was a $20 Harvard study on falling down. They got a lot of young people. And what they did was they asked the young people to walk in a path that was so hard to walk because it was like, a lot of uh, twists and turns, a lot of rocks, a lot of chance for you to fall. And they told the young people that we are doing this experiment to see how you're going to cope with this kind of path because we want to study how elderly people fall. And since we cannot use real elderly people, we're going to ask younger people to walk this path. It was a difficult path to walk through. And sure enough, like there were countless, the author participated in this experiment and they were supposed to be paid $200 to walk this path. And it was terrible. He describes it as everywhere you go, you're going to fall. There are rocks, you slide, and then you have to get up again. Then you start to walk again. Then there's a hole and you fall in the hole and, and then you get up again. And at the end of the at the end of the whole experiment, you get $20. So for a while he said, this is such a very ridiculous thing to uh, do for $20. And you know what? He ended up finishing the whole experiment, the others quit, and he was paid $200 to do that. So he was very, very, very happy. But you know what? That experience was an experience of falling down and getting up. It's, an ex it's, a, it's a test of resiliency the ability to keep going, standing up after you fall. And he was able to use this kind of, uh, he's, he realized that I'm a very resilient person. I won. I was the only one who, who finished it. And his confidence for his ability to rise up every time he falls down, that, that really inspired him the rest of his life. So how do we see stumbling blocks? Do we see stumbling blocks as stepping stones? How do we see setbacks? Are they setbacks or are they springboards? It's okay to fall down. You just learn from that falling down. Now, a lot of people are chatting. Yes, gratefulness. I just follow the suggestion, yes, at night. Uh, our doctor, Belinda, she writes uh, her gratitude statement every night. Wow, that would be a wonderful book if you could put that together. Okay. So um, not, okay, not a good idea for COVID. Anyway, that was Rico's. Anyway, uh, randomly checking the, uh, okay. So after a crisis or adversity, your mind follows one of three paths. One of three. Okay. So here are the paths. Number one, the negative event produces no change. You end where you started. So you learned nothing, neutral. Number two, worse after the event. You become fearful of conflict or challenge. You say, oh, I fell down, it hurts. I don't wanna get hurt again. So I'm never going to do this again. That could be your reaction. Or number three, and this is where happiness comes in. You use the adversity and failure to become even stronger and more capable than before. Ask yourselves, are you a number one, a number two, or number three? It's obvious that number three, and if you're honest with yourself, is somebody who will be very, very successful in life. Sometimes it's easy to t read about it or talk about it in a, in a webinar such as this, but when a negative event really happens to you, you are rejected by a loved one, or you, you failed in an exam, or you opened up a business and you failed miserably, then your attitude is really put to the test. Key seven, the Zorro circle. Now everybody, I think you've heard of Zorro, and he's famous because he has this sword and he, he draws a, a zero, a circle, uh, in, in the ground. That's part of his style, I guess. And the sorrow circle, which the book talks about, 
is actually limiting your focus to small, manageable goals that can expand your sphere of power, okay? The concept of the Zorro Circle is a powerful metaphor for how we can achieve our most ambitious goals in our jobs, careers, and our personal lives. One of the biggest drivers of success is the belief that our behavior matters and that we have control over our future. Yet, when our stresses and workloads seem to mount faster than our ability to keep up, feelings of control are often the first things to go especially when we try to tackle too much at once. So what we do is we concentrate our efforts on small, that's why you have a circle, manageable goals, and then we regain the feeling of control. So crucial to performance. By limiting the scope of our efforts, then watching those efforts have the intended effect we accumulate the resources, knowledge, and confidence to expand the circle. So you, you actually expand your circle, your comfort zone, little by little, by focusing on the small things first. Not thinking of the huge goal and you get immobilized because it's just too overwhelming. Mm, there you go. And uh, I would like to share this book. Like uh, we also did a book sharing on the one thing. This is a book that says, if you have a goal that's out there for the next 20 years and you try to make it smaller and you break it up into pieces, into pieces, into pieces, what's the most important thing in 20 years? What's the most important thing in 10 years? What's the more, most important thing in five, in one year, in in uh, what do you need to do in every month to achieve the 20 year goal until you're down to what do you have to do today? What is the one thing you need to do today in order to achieve your big, hairy, audacious goal? Now, this is a New York Times bestseller, another book, The One Thing, similar to the Zorro theory. Gaining control and focusing on little changes is how you can make the greatest improvements. Okay, little steps, little steps. So let's write down. Maybe you can do this exercise, things I can control. Number one, I can exercise. Number two, I can eat well. Number three, I can read and have a positive attitude every day. Number four, I can listen to audios and positive TED Talks and podcasts. And number five, I can pray. Things I can control. Things I can't control. I can't control the weather. I can't control the virus. I can't control the government and the president. I can't control the government officials, okay? But I can protect myself by staying at home. So let's, let's just focus on things we can't control and Disappointment, negative feelings come from expecting things to happen, but we can't control it. And so we get discouraged and we get disillusioned and we become despondent because we try to control things we cannot control. So key number eight, willpower alone cannot affect change. You know, we keep on saying, wow, I need a willpower to lose weight. I need a willpower to have those muscles and and uh, you know, have a beach body, whatever. But willpower cannot. Let me tell you an experiment, a very cute experiment they did, and the book talks about it. And the, the experiment is, is chocolate chip cookies and radish, okay? There were three sets of groups. The first group was shown a, a plate of sumptuous chocolate chip cookies and a plate of radishes. And that group was, uh, was told, you can eat the radishes. You're going to wait for like 30 minutes. You can eat the radishes, but you cannot touch the cookies. Okay. The second group, they were told, you can eat the radishes and you can eat the cookies. Okay. Got that? And the third group was, they didn't have the cookies and the radishes. So after 30 or 45 minutes, these three sets of people were given uh, something hard to do. Not the 
an exam, but some puzzles that made them think, guess what? The one who quit so early, the group that like failed because they just got tired of doing the puzzles, they had no more power, no more willpower to, to uh, do the puzzles. It was the group that was deprived of the cookies, which means that their will, they, they, they were resisting the cookies in the experiment and they were already exercising their willpower by staying away from the cookies. And by the time they were given a task, their willpower ran out. And there are many tests like that, uh, even with children, you know. So this is true. Willpower is not, not enough. Now, sustain good habits by activation energy. The book talks about activation energy, the initial spark needed to catalyze a reaction. Now, the, the book talks about somebody who wants to exercise, okay? So exercising first thing in the morning is not easy. But in order to break that, you know, this inertia, the, uh, the, uh, the tendency for a body to stay at rest unless you do something to break that, that is activation energy. Activation energy for someone who wants to exercise in the morning because you feel so lazy, like, I want to stay longer in bed. Am I going to exercise today or not? Well, I exercised yesterday, so maybe I don't exercise today anymore. And you get all these excuses not to exercise. So in order to activate yourself, to have that energy, the person is already in his jogging outfit, sleeping. He's already wearing socks, okay? And uh, he's got all his gear there, whether it's a cap or a bottle of water right beside him. And all he has to do is when he wakes up is to put on his running shoes and uh, he's ready to go and go to the bathroom for a while and now he's ready to go. Imagine sleeping in your jogging outfit. That creates activation energy, that initial spark that will catalyze, ca catalyze your your next few steps. Like, like me, I'd like to read, you know, I like to make that a priority is to read every day. But sometimes, you know, we don't feel like reading. So I need to find a certain time for reading and I need to have the book right beside me and uh, a pen or a highlighter so I can make some notes when I read. Otherwise, if the book's not there where I can see it, I'm not going to read. I don't see the book. I don't read. So I do something else. But it's up to you how you can create that activation energy. That's just an example. Oh, there we are. This is the slide about exercise. Because at this part, we talk about exercise in the morning. And this is the, this is the activation energy. This is where the slide comes in. And as you can see, just to repeat, there are so many hormones that are released when you exercise, endorphins, uh, cortisol. It, cortisol is a negative hormone and it's a stress hormone. And exercising induces the level of cortisol, dopamine, okay, and all these other um, wonderful, happy hormones, okay? You can, you can read. So this is where the slide comes. Okay, sorry about that. Number nine, social support is one of your greatest assets. I don't know if you remember that uh, TED Talk, The Secret to Happiness. They, they studied like so many people who were, who were old and they were asked, uh, so what was the most important thing if you could, what do you regret? What you should, should you have done more? Um, was it money that made you ha happy? Was it fame? Was it a success? What was it that made you happy? And if I recall right, that experiment on uh, happiness actually said that the number one factor that made people happy and fulfilled in their old age was the relationships they had, the quality of relationships they had with friends and family. That was the most number one factor that created happiness for them. So who is your social support? 
I don't know. I have, uh, I have family, of course, uh, very close to me. That's my number one support. Number two is I'm part of a business community that promotes uh, being healthy, being wealthy, and being wise. I'm also part of a Catholic community that uh, gives glory to God in everything we do and that is out there to evangelize a lot of other people so that they can have a personal relationship with the Lord. So it's totally up to you what kind of social support you want and you need. But you are the, the, one, you are the average of the five people you deal with every day. So if you're with negative people, you're going to be negative. If you deal mostly with positive, ambitious people, you will be positive and you will be ambitious in a good way. Number 10 is, uh, well, not yet number 10, show gratitude, show recognition. This creates stronger bonds within your community. Um, be encouraging to people, talk positive because nobody's perfect. But we decide whether we're going to look at a person in our community and say, this person is good and nobody's perfect, but we don't talk about the bad side. We just talk about the good side and it's called edification. And I like that in our business community, there is recognition, there's encouragement, there is edification. Now, number 10, you have the power to share your happiness with the world. And this is the last point that I would like to share. You have that power, okay? Make some changes. Apply the happiness advantage and you can create a small ripple. But a small ripple can actually ripple out the butterfly effect. A butterfly flapping its wings can create a hurricane on the other side of the world. Wow. This book says that any of you and each of us we have a thousand people, uh, let's say third degree of people you know, it's about a thousand people. And as I was reading the book, a thousand people, third degree, like for example, third degree is, I have my son, Ryan, he has a friend, um, his best friend is Jonathan, and Jonathan's father is John, okay? That's third degree. And uh, according to the book, you have a thousand people like that. I, I kind of disagree with the book because look at your Facebook. It's not a thousand. It's like 5,000 or more than that. And you can influence all these people with your happiness advantage. Okay. One way or the other. I talked about many ways that you can be happy and infect others because being happy is very, very contagious. Let me end with a little bit of an, a story again. There was an experiment done, and this is a, I think I'm gonna do this in the next talk I do with a big audience. Tell, um, in the audience, they were asked to get a partner, okay? And they said, one of you, okay, the one on the right, is going to be a very neutral person. You are not going to say anything. You are not going to, smile you're not going to blink you can blink but you're not going to give any expression on your face you're going to be like a, a piece of stone okay so one person has no emotion let me look at some of the comments first before i tell you what's going to happen to that experiment okay okay yeah thank you i think everybody can see the comments too social support, life, happiness, okay. So they agree that, uh, you know, long life is happiness. Belinda, she's ask, asking for the slide on exercise. I think we, maybe I can, uh, I'll do that at, at the end, okay? So people can read that slide uh, if, if that's what you want. So in the experiment, again, one person was told straight face, no laughing, no expression, you're a piece of stone, okay? You're just a piece of stone, nothing on your face. Now face your partner. And the partner was asked to smile and smile and smile. And guess what? 
100% of the audience could not help it. No matter how strongly they tried to show no emotion, looking at the person who's smiling, they could not stop themselves from smiling back, which means that truly this experiment shows that people are infected by happiness. Now, I hope you like this uh, quick uh, sharing because there's really a lot more, but I don't want to go over time. I think I've spent uh, quite some time. Now for the benefit of Belinda, uh, I'd like to go back to the, to the slide. With the exercise, okay. Uh, okay, summary, summary, the happiness advantage. Traditional psychology focuses on the negatives without seeing the positives. Number two, success revolves around happiness, not the other way around. The happiness advantage will give you a performance edge like the doctors, remember? Number four, enhance your performance by enhancing your mindset. Number five, train your brain to look at the positive over the negative. Number six, fall up, not fall down by turning negative momentum into positive momentum. Seven, gaining control and focusing on little changes is how you can make the greatest improvements. Number eight, willpower alone can't affect change because willpower is a very limited resource. Number nine, social support is one of your greatest assets. And number 10, you have the power to share your happiness with the world. Now, I would like to... Uh, turn you over to the MC, uh, Ryan, my son, who will go back to the exercise page for those of you who want to see that interesting page and for whatever comments have to be uh, addressed before we end. So thank you again for attending this webinar. It has been recorded so we can share this uh, wonderful book with uh, other people who just love the idea of learning and finding ways to be better. Thank you and uh, God bless, stay safe and well everyone, bye. Thank you so much to our sharer tonight on covering the international bestseller, The Happiness advantage so of course right now all bookstores are closed but you can always download uh, an ebook or um, get the audiobook version and there are a bunch of videos on YouTube about the happiness advantage for some of you who are asking you wanted to see a slide in greater detail we're actually uh, happy to be able to share the PDF of the slides if you want to get a copy of the presentation, you can actually get in touch with me through uh, my number. It's there at the bottom. That's my uh, phone number. Or you can email me at ryan at syzygy.ph. That's also our website, www.syzygy.ph. Uh, and of course, if you're going to use the slides to present to someone, somebody else, be sure to credit us. Now, uh, it, that was a really insightful talk. There's something in the book for all of us to learn and apply in our life, especially now. And it's also good to uh, take a fresh look at what's happening since we're several weeks into the uh, lockdown. I think it's time to actually begin to think what's going to be the new normal. So uh, tonight we talked about a book. We also cover other topics in our ongoing webinar series. And tomorrow night, we're going to discuss another topic called Bouncing Forward, Opportunities in a Time of Crisis. This is not about a book, although uh, there will be learning involved. We're going to actually cover uh, some things that are happening with the country, with the world today, uh, in general business trends that are, that are taking place. And we're also going to discuss a special project that we at Syzygy, as, as a company, as a business community, we're expanding. So if you feel like the current crisis has 
disrupted your career, your business, your industry, your line of work. You, you can't show up to work or your suppliers have stopped uh, doing what they need to do. Whatever it is that's happening with you. If you're wondering how you can actually uh, create a backup plan, how you can diversify, how you can create new sources of income while being at home, working from home, I really invite you to check out our webinar tomorrow. So you can see there the meeting ID. There's also a password. You can also get the link from your friend. And we're going to have a nice uh, discussion, informative and uh, meaningful discussion about our project. So if you want to learn more about uh, us and what we do, just visit our website. Uh, you will see a Bouncing Forward banner there and you can read more about what we do. So with that, I want to thank our share, Olive, on covering such a really good book. I'll show it to you again. It's such a nice uh, bright yellow book, something that will hopefully remind us that uh, at the end of the day, despite all of the challenges we face, it's good to be grateful. And gratitude is you know, always in short supply. So let's learn to count our blessings. So with that, um, thank you to everyone who has joined us and has commented and made this discussion very, very uh, memorable and productive. Uh, once again, my name is Ryan Fernandez. You can always get in touch through my email and my phone number. Uh, with that, we're going to wrap up tonight's webinar. Have a pleasant and peaceful Thursday night and uh, a quiet weekend ahead. So God bless everyone and hope to see you at our webinar tomorrow night.